Hello there everyone and welcome back to another movie review. I have not made one in a little while. I had the flu for two weeks and then I was catching up on missed schoolwork for a week so uh, that's why I haven't really made any reviews or really watched any movies for the last few weeks. But um, hopefully I'm back and either way I did manage to see Captain Marvel on the um, opening day on uh, Friday March 8th and I am excited to talk about this movie for many reasons. Um, especially because of sort of the controversy that seems to be surrounding the movie. Um, there was some po uh, some pre-release um, political controversy, I guess, from people online. Um, Rotten Tomatoes had a whole thing with lots of review bombing. But I'm here to share my unaffected opinion because I don't really lean either way on those kind of uh, problems. I don't think it's the greatest thing in the world. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. Just getting out of the way. Um... And I just want to tell you what I thought of this movie. Um, so the story of Captain Marvel follows a woman named Verse who it wakes up on a on the homeworld of the Kree race, an alien species called Hala. She is a member of a Star Force soldier group um, on Hala for the Kree, and she doesn't really remember her past. She just knows that she's been training for to be a Kree soldier for as long as she can remember because her memory has been gone from before then. Um, and she doesn't know anything about herself until she is going on a mission with her Star Force to hunt down the sh and their enemies called the Skrulls, which are green shape-shifting aliens. Um, and she, on that mission, starts having flashbacks to what her past was. She ends up on Earth, um, which they call some weird number combination. That's their code for Earth. Um, and she teams up with good old young Nicholas J. Fury uh, of S.H.I.E.L.D., and they start f going around trying to capture the scrolls, trying to figure out what's going on with government conspiracy, intergalactic war, her personal story and personal journey. And it's all of that jammed into a, what, two hour, 15 minute movie, which surprisingly, as wonky as it sounds, works really well. Um, so I'm going to get two sort of flat points out of the way. They're not good or bad. Then I'll get the negatives, and then I'll talk about the good. So first off, um, I just want to get this out there to sort of set where I am going into this movie. I don't have any nostalgia for the 90s. This movie is set in the 90s, which is a time period we haven't really seen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, but I have no nostalgia for that time. If there was a Game Boy in the background or a blockbuster video or some reference to some TV show that I didn't watch because I wasn't alive when it was running, it doesn't affect me at all. That was something that a lot of people praised about the movie because they had nostalgia for that time period, but it doesn't affect me because I I can't really have nostalgia for that. Um, second point, I just want to get this out of the way because there are some people that might have an issue with the movie, but to get this out there early, there is no overly feminist propaganda story in this movie. It is really just a story about a strong character who happens to be a woman who is finding herself and going on her journey there's not re any really any political uh either way leaning and i just think people should go into this having fun with a action sci-fi adventure story and not expecting anything political out of it which is good for me because i'm not a huge fan of political leanings in, in interacting with uh my movies so um all right on to the negatives um first off there are some pretty awkward dialogue sometimes. It's not constant. Um, it's usually just one-liners or short conversations between two characters during an action sequence or something like that that just are kind of awkwardly paced and find out, kind of feel out of place. It takes you out of the movie a little bit, but because the the action going on is it catches your eye, it's something I can let slide. But it is something to think about. It's not. Um, it might affect people more and it affected me. Um, also, there is pretty poor lighting in some places, and I had a conversation with a friend about this, who he didn't like any of the lighting at all throughout the whole movie, but there is sometimes it's super dark, and it's kind of hard to tell what's going on, especially in the opening uh, sections of this movie. Um, but, yeah, that's not... I don't know why they couldn't have just edited that a little bit. Um, also, I kind of wish that we were able to see more um, space fight scenes, um, with Captain Marvel flying around and shooting lasers and things like that. But she doesn't really discover 
herself and those powers until nearing the end of the movie, which isn't really a spoiler. It's an Emmys movie, so whatever. Um, but that was a really entertaining aspect of the movie, and I expected there to be more of it. But unfortunately, because of how the story was paced, that I didn't really get that out of it. Um, and finally, there is a cat in this movie, which you've probably seen in the trailers and in the posters and all that. His name is Goose, and Goose gets into some shenanigans. And I think that the CGI for Goose, when he's doing things that cats don't normally do, is really bad. And maybe that's because I have two cats and I look at them all the time, so I know what cat movement looks like. But, oh god, some of this just, it just feels weird. It's a little off-putting. But, um, yeah, I don't know what else I can say about that. So, that's all the negatives out of the way. Not very many negatives. None of those are huge points. None of them destroy my enjoyment of the movie. But, and here are my uh, positives. I'm going to start with the story. As someone who has been reading comics for basically as long as I can remember, who knows the Marvel Universe, who knows the history of the Kree Scroll War, who knows where Carol Danvers' origin was, and uh, how S.H.I.E.L.D. figures into things, and how the Avengers were formed in the comics, this movie subverts almost all of that and kind of gives you a fresh perspective, an alternate universe version of what could happen in in the world that we have been living in the marvel cinematic universe for the last 10 years um and it was just fun for me because i'm used to kind of knowing where the story is going to go them sort of being pretty predictable but because i had been expecting something uh how the kree scroll war plays out in the comic books they pretty much completely subverted that and it was just kept me on my toes because i didn't know where the plot was going to go it felt pretty twisty to me and I just was really engaged the entire time because of how unique the story was compared to its comic book origins. Um, and because of that sort of unique pacing and unique style, this movie has a very unique structure. It is an amnesia story, which you've probably seen plenty of. Hero amnesia stories are not uncommon. But this one, I think, was handled way better than most other ones. There's sort of canonical reasons why um, the characters are... Uh, the character of Carol is discovering her past, why she lost her past, all those things figure into sort of a puzzle that you have to put together throughout the course of the movie, which all comes together in a very satisfying way. And on top of that, there are kind of multiple storylines interweaving, each sort of involving the other supporting characters, and those come together in a very satisfying way at the end as well. So I really enjoyed the story, and it kept me entertained the entire time. Um... Another great point, as I mentioned with the characters, is that there are all the supporting characters in this movie from, um, aside from Carol Danvers obviously being the main character, Samuel Jackson as Nick Fury, highlight of the movie for me, he was great, I loved him as sort of naive new S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. You have Ben Mendelsohn playing Talos, the uh, Skrull leader, who is just charismatic, he's funny, it's, he's got a great uh, story going through it. You've got her best friend, uh, Maria Rambo, and her son, Mo her, her daughter, Monica, both of which have a great influence on the main character and their own arcs and are interesting characters in their own right. Uh, her boss, Yon Rog, the leader of the Star Force group. All these characters have their own story. They don't feel underused. They don't feel overused. No one. They all share the spotlight incredibly well, and it gives a really powerful ensemble cast, which is not what I was expecting from this movie. I thought it would just be... Buddy Coppa, Carol, and Nick Fury, but I was pleasantly surprised to find out that there was a lot more to it. Um, and those, those characters are all amazingly acted. All the actors that I mentioned did an incredible job. Um, I really enjoyed Brie Larson as Carol Danvers more than I thought I was going to, um, especially because in the comics, Carol Danvers is kind of just, she's kind of an asshole, to be honest. Um, and in this, uh, Brie Larson plays plays her as super petty, kind of hot shot, passive aggressive, um, and it's a really interesting personality that I can't wait to see involved in the bigger ensemble of the Avengers movies when she eventually does show up in the greater cinematic universe. Um, let's see, what else can I mention? Um, the humor. I am a pretty sarcastic guy, my humor is pretty dry. And this movie was exactly my sense of humor. I probably think it might be the funniest Marvel movie to me, um, which obviously 
has to hold up to the Guardians movies and Iron Man and things like that and the one-liners in Avengers, which of course are classics and I love. But uh, this movie matched my sense of humor with its how the humor fit into all the characters and kept the pacing going throughout the movie and I really enjoyed it. It had me giggling the whole time just because I knew there was a joke coming in almost any scene. Um, so I also want to talk about the action, which this is a superhero movie. People go for the action. I'm personally more invested in the stories of the characters, which obviously like I said I really enjoy the story, but the uh, action in this movie was also really great. Um, it may not all be super large scale like the Guardians or Avengers movies, but um, Brie Larson's powers and her Carol, Danvers, Carol Danvers' powers with the shooting of the lasers and her hair glowing and her eyes glowing and energy blasts and all that, it's its just fun to watch. She's The CGI is incredible with all the waves of energy with blues and yellows and purples, oranges, all sorts of crazy colors flying out, and it's just amazingly fun to watch and I really can't wait for it to be combined in sort of combo attacks with the other Avengers like you see uh, Iron Man angling a laser off Cap's shield or things like that when there's lasers and cosmic powers involved it'll be even more entertaining on this sort of primal epic level um, I also enjoyed the score a lot I'm going to probably listen to it a lot I like a lot of the Marvel scores um, especially the main themes like Homecoming and the Avengers and Captain America and even the Doctor Strange theme, Ant-Man, Guardians, all these songs are really iconic to me and I really enjoy them. And I think that Carol's theme and some of the other pieces of this soundtrack might uh, be up there with that, especially because Carol's theme is sort of a mix between Captain America's uh, militaristic sort of upbeat um, tune mixed with the, the intro of the Marvel Universe where it's, it's just epic and pounding and that surprised me, and I really enjoyed it because I actually really enjoy that song, even if it's only 30 seconds or whatever. Um, oh, and finally, to talk about the action, one last point about the action. At times, I felt it felt it, I thought it felt like a Star Wars movie, which was cool. I like Star Wars action, especially something like Force Awakens, which I think has pretty good action. Um, and at, at times, I thought it felt like Garden of the Galaxy, which of course has a lot of fun, fast-paced sort of indoors, people beating up each other and bouncing off the environment, things like that. There was a couple scenes like that. And it's a mix of Star Wars, Guardians, Avengers, sort of all these things coming together, even like James Bond sort of parkour and things like that. Those come together to make a really unique action style that I thought worked really, really well. And I can't wait to see how they sort of evolve it now that Carol has full powers with shooting lasers and flying into space and stuff like that. Um, and then finally, my biggest m enjoyment about this movie is how well it ties into the cinematic universe that I've been so engaged in for the last, what is it now, 11 years of my life. Um, it, there's a lot of Easter eggs, there's a lot of tie-ins tie to the um, previously existing arcs and sort of character development, things like that. We get a lot of things explained um, that influence the other movies. They It just slides effortlessly right into that slot of the 90s that we didn't know anything about and now everything just has a lot more weight you can go back and watch uh avengers or iron man 3 or whatever it may be and find new context for the lines that they said and how well they've been planning the cinematic universe for the last 10 years it's just impressive it's really fun to watch and it's the connection and sort of uh what i say continuity that these movies have that keep me so engaged. It reminds me of the, com the comic book world they've created in, in, the, in the comics where you can pick up an issue and sort of feel like you're in the world. There's connections to things all around and it's just very satisfying to notice things and understand what's going on and be able to learn more about the development of this world that I will be engaged in for an even longer amount of time. Which brings me to my very, very final point this movie just gets me excited for the future. I can't wait to see how Carol um, influences the Avengers, as I said, with her powers and her crazy unique personality that I think will play fun against uh, Cap. They'll probably butt heads. Uh, her and Tony will have some really fun interactions, and 
she's just going to be a big personality in the future, and I can't wait to see that. And also, her supporting characters, we could see them again. We could see them in sequels that take place in on the other side of the galaxy in another time period we haven't seen yet. And that really excites me, especially now that we're getting a lot more cosmic in the MCU. And things like that, just there's so many stories they can tell, there's so many characters that they can introduce, so many concepts, and it all ties together, and it's just amazingly fun to watch. So I honestly can't recommend this movie enough. I finished the movie, the credits started playing. There are two post-credit scenes, by the way, so stay for both of them. When the movie finished and the credits started rolling, I looked over at my friend and my brother, and we all just sort of unanimously said, wow, that was really good. And that's just how I feel. It it surprised me. It ex- uh, exceeded all my expectations. I didn't expect very much out of it. But Captain Marvel really delivered, and I can't wait to go see it again. Hopefully I can go see it again this weekend, um, but we'll see. Thank you so much for watching, guys. This was a very passionate review on my side. Uh, I enjoyed the movie, and I hope you do too. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in another video.